Okay, I'm going to throw a variety of canisters now. Um, I just threw a whole bunch of mugs and um, I just finished downloading my video on the sugar jars, but I don't have many canisters, so uh, large coffee tea kind of things. So I'm going to throw a bunch of those right now. So I have about, uh, let's see, these are about one and three quarter pound size balls of clay. So let's, uh, and this is my last of my recycled clay. So what I do when I throw canisters, and if I want the lids to all be the same size, I will throw one to see if it's what I'm looking for, make that one, measure it, do the calipers, so I've got a gauge, and then I'll throw a bunch of lids uh, to fit the canisters that I'm going to make. So let's do the canister first. These are for tea and coffee, maybe tea bags or something, so... And I've got a bunch of different uh, shapes that I've been throwing. So I'll do a few on here so you can see a few variations. Lids are important on canisters. You want to make sure they're a really good fit because of the... Um, well, this bat's wobbling. I've got to uh, cut off the pin on this uh, wheel head because it won't unscrew because I'd like to add a, a, a new pin in it um, because this one's so worn out that's why the, the bats all wobble on it because the pin is actually very thin and it's a 35 year old wheel. Okay, let's get it a little bit taller. Wider. Put my thumb down right on the rim to compress there as I get to the top. Make the, the rim a little thicker so that I have a wiggle room if the lid is a bit tight, I can trim a bit out. And this is the size I want to make. Oh, look at that. Perfect. First time. That's probably hated by some people, but you get it after your eyes have been trained for a while, you'll get without measuring. And because it's a little thick, I can trim a bit out of the center anyway. But let me just get that off. I'm going to try bellying this piece quite a bit. So I'm going to put my foot in now. Oh, actually, this is a nice... I've noticed that if I do this with this rim, put my finger right above there and press in, you get this automatic foot just created. So that's always nice. It's instant. Okay, so let's get some water down there a bit. I'm going to push out hard. And give a really big belly on this one. Don't want to open up the lid too much. We could do that again because that was actually kind of no wobble at all there. So let's go even more. Okay, yeah, that's not a bad belly. I'm gonna take the water out again. I don't use the sponge on a stick usually for things this wide because you can get your hand in, but. Get that out. Let's measure this again. See if I pushed it in a bit. Yes, I did. I felt like I was pushing the rim in a little bit as I was doing that. So all I do then is just pull back a touch. I didn't change the belly. Remeasure. Just a tiny bit tight. Let's see whether this does anything on here now. So I might be able to just round it off a bit and open it up with that a little bit. 
This is my rim tool you've seen in other videos. Now let's see. Well, in actual fact, I think I squashed it in a bit then. So let's open this up a touch more. Perfect. So I really want to get that tight so I know if, that I've got my lid for these jars to be just what I want. So that's just a basic round belly jar. Um, you can decide to leave it smooth and put glazes on it. You could flute it, you can do, you could, you could paddle it. Um, you can disfigure it a little bit, maybe by, I mean, one of the simplest thing um, I wonder if it would work for this. I think it will. I'm just going to make a little line there. And then another line just underneath. Give it a little belly, like a double belly thing going on there. That'll catch the glaze a little bit. So that's one. Little ball of clay, about just over half a pound probably. around a bit when it feels like the clay is really nice you just go for center and this is the very simplest of lids you press down don't make it too thin though at the very center where you're pushing down and then you take your wooden rib and from the very edge push in and you create a wall just by pushing in and then put this underneath so you can lift your lid a tiny bit flattening it down there and let's see how tight to fit that is well it's just a little loose just a touch loose so you put this back underneath there and just with your middle finger of your left hand just push out a touch and that should have widened it just a touch yeah that's just about right now but it lifted this up a touch so i'm going to flatten that down a bit more and because we've got a thick rim there i can push this out a little bit and make it just a touch wider So if you've got to do a production style lid, these can have a knob on them, you trim it basically and stick a bird on it if you want a figurative element for a knob or you want a strap handle, I mean there's a variety of things you can do. And to get them off I just put the sponge with loaded with water there and just do that. And that gets some water underneath without actually you know, risking dribbling some water on the rim and then it will just slide right over. different shape canisters they all have to fit the holes all have to be like that And um, this is a thing, um, a potter called Richard Batterham in England, um, so homage to Richard here. Um, he used to put these little, two little lines in his pieces, and I can do it with this rib just by doing that. It's a nice decorative thing to catch the color as it goes down there. And later on, when it's a bit stiffer, I could flute, I can do anything, any number of things in these areas. 
and it'll be a defined kind of um, sort of thing. But while I'm throwing on the wheel, another thing you can do, be, this is something you can get it just going the right speed, which is about there. I'm going to take my foot off the pedal now, and you can do this. Just a little decorative thing. Very quick, but will catch the glaze and be quite nice. And you can do many variations on that. But just knock the sharpness off those things there. There won't be anything too sharp there. But sometimes you get a little sharpness in that kind of groovy area there. So it's another canister. My left arm is really wedged into the wheel on the splash pan of my thigh there. So that elbow is really forced against my side, basically, so that it can't move very easily. This play is so good, I'm not even going to cone up this time. I might live to regret that, but we'll see. Roll in. Now you'll need to be a little brave to do this, but another thing you can do is do that. And many times you want to do it. And it obviously disfigures it and knocks the rim a little bit, so you just have to go back on that rim and round that off again. And you can also just make a line at the bottom where those marks sort of finish. And that'll make the glaze run into those valleys to get a little darker in those areas. And uh, just makes it nice and interesting. Makes it look handmade. So very organic looking. Off a shoulder on top of the piece, and let's give it a line to define that shoulder. So you've got this area now. So if you very let's get this going slow, lift my foot off it, and then I mean you can do this. You could even pull up that way. So you can choose which way you want to go. So let's try this one because we did it down before, I think. And as many times, twice around if you want to. Whatever you want to do. Just somewhere for the glaze to go. And then find that edge a bit more at the bottom there because it does make it a bit disfigured when you do things like that and then the top one probably ought to be redone something nice 
so the glaze will have some variation. Yeah, that's perfect. These lids will be pretty tight, so that'll be good. Because if you're putting stuff in a jar like flour or sugar, you don't want insects to get in there. Or flies, really, I suppose, is the big issue for people. Okay, I'm just going to trim the lids now. The jars are not trimmed, uh, but I've got one as set, set up as a chuck. Um, so I can just place each lid. I have, I think, 15 lids to trim. They're very soft still, but not soft enough to, to dent with my fingers. Um, and by putting it on the jar, pretty much can get it centered straight away. There's a little wobble to that way, so that should be better. Okay, that's good. And then I'm just trimming on a chuck. So I don't actually, you know, using the rubber pads of the gipping grip, I would probably make little marks on the piece because the clay is so soft at the moment. It's kind of sticking to my tool a little bit because it's so soft. And I'm just taking that little excess off. And then use my finger to smooth it. And then I want a little flat groove about here, the width of the trimming tool. That will take some glaze there in that little crevice and give it a slightly different color. I'm going to use my finger just to smooth off that, just a touch. And if you want to at this point, I mean, like you can do this again later on, but the piece is already on that there. So if you wanted to just make Using the, another, like a finer trimming tool, you could make a couple of little grooves in there that will take glaze nicely as well. There you go. And then lift it up. And you can see you've got a couple of little grooves there that will catch some glaze. And now I just have to put the, the knobs on the pieces next. Okay, I have all my little handles pulled here. They're just miniature handles, just like I do for my um, coffee mugs. Um, and I'm cutting them to the same size. I also just had a, a call from my clay company who was, said they're gonna ship my clay today. So that's uh, gonna be, by the time I get it, it's almost 12 weeks. There you go, so I've got that cut there. Boy, that doesn't work. It's very sticky clay. I just pulled these handles. But anyway, we've got four handles there. And I've got my little jaws. And the lids are all trimmed, but I didn't do the grooves. It's just the, the lids are just too soft to really be doing the grooves yet. Um, and you just basically, since the clay is so soft, you just wet the area just like I do with the coffee mugs. And I have a little trick I'm going to show you in a second. Because when clay is this soft, it means that it squishes way, way too easy. So what I do is those little round sponges that we use, I put them underneath. So instead of the rim taking the weight, the, the actual middle of the piece is taking the weight where I'm going to put the handle. And, um, and I simply place the handle where I think it needs to be. Make sure it's in the center. Let's do the same to all four. And in, the, in my years gone by, I have squished rims, and it's always annoying because it's almost finished at that point. So, um, so I learned to put a little thickness underneath the actual part that I'm going to be squishing and pressing on. So I'm working on with four pieces on a bat, like I do with the coffee mugs. I like to do everything, all the processes together. And then using the paintbrush, 
you can do it two ways. You can either just kind of put your fingers like that, try and be even about it and just do that. I'm just simply squishing. without any risk of squashing the rim. And then just use the finial of the finial? No, the ferrule of the brush to actually sculpt it in. Okay, now I'm going to trim these jaws. They've been uh, drying out at least 24 hours, um, maybe two days now, because it's been raining a lot. So, um, so I'm using my Giffen grip. Yep, we got power. Not much trimming necessary, because I really like what I've done to the outside. Just to... I'm gonna show you a few things with some rollers and stamps as well but basically I just like to flatten it out and then I always take out a little bevel not a bevel a little hollow in the center so it sits more on the ring on the outside because uh, when your clay is pot is drying if it's drying upside down you can literally have the bottom raise up a little bit in the center and so it's good to take off some of that that's why you should leave a fairly decent thickness in the bottom I have, you know, they don't sit level if you if you get a sort of raised over kind of effect when it's drying. So you need to make sure that that doesn't happen. And then there's a variety of things that you can do once you've trimmed it. I mean, we can um, do some sort of diagonal fluting. You have to get used to doing this because it's about muscle memory in your hand and just how far you're going to move each the wheel each time when you're rotating it and that gives you a nice fluted effect but at a diagonal and you can cover this in stuff you don't have to you know leave it smooth you can texture the entire thing if you want to there's plenty of carving tools out there these days uh, so you can do a nice uh, but also remember the old thing less is more all right, so um, so you don't have to cover something. I have to tell myself that all the time. And we've got the glaze that actually, you know, will have its own effect as well. Um, but just for the process, what I'm doing with you guys, I will just give you something else as well. Let's see if this is going to This is a handmade roller, piece of bamboo, um, and a little clay roller that I made in 1973 or 74. <laughs> Made it when I was at high school. There you go. So it'll just give myself a little texture up there. Maybe I want it, no, I can't do it because the arm's too tall at the moment. But that gives you something as well to look at when you're glazing. And the lids, whether they fit or not, I don't know. I haven't smoothed these over properly yet, but um, I just have to run over them with a brush a bit later on. Uh, my loop handles, it just needs a touch of trimming there. It goes in where it's a bit tight. Um, I should get one finger underneath. Now, I like handles that don't go up as high as that when they're a little bit shallow, but like I've talked about before, if people have arthritis, uh, they have a hard time gripping things. So, you know, you're losing customers. So try to make sure that you can at least have um, somebody stick a finger in that handle there and see if you want to shrink, remember, in the kiln. Um, that way um, you're leaving your, you know, your customer base is broader. But I do like handles that don't stick up as far as that. So I'm, I'm choosing function over aesthetic there, of course. And that's something you'll have to decide upon many times during every day of work as a potter. You may like something different, but you've got to think about how it works. Now I always leave a little thickness with these, so 
so that we can actually trim out here. So it's a good idea not to throw thin when you're doing the lids. So basically you have two choices when you, if you're trying to fit a lid, is you can trim a little bit off that flange and now it goes in and is that tight? That's really tight still. It's perfectly in and out, but with glaze, you may end up with a, a lid that's not very easy to fit. So I always take a little extra off just by taking the rim down a little on the inside. And now I have a little bit of a wobble Still a pretty good type of lid, but the glaze is actually going to um, thicken it up a little bit so it won't be quite as much as that, but that's a nice little fitting lid. So. There's also the age-old juddering, uh, what do we call this? You know what I'm doing? Chattering. So that's a simple, easy, quick technique. Just have to make sure your tool is sharp and the clay is in the right condition because it actually isn't as easy as it looks to get it going. But once it starts chattering, it does a pretty good job. Um, and I like the square edge tools, but there's lots of other shapes tools you can use to do that. But it just gives you a nice texture at the bottom that'll catch the glaze. And then of course, it's nice every so often if you just kind of give yourself a little interest, but it isn't very much, just a little something using stamps. You're just playing at this point and that's part of the fun. And making stamps is fun too. So I made this one back in the 1970s. And guess what? Batman. <laughs> I don't know why I put a bat on there, but um, and there's just a regular cross on that one. But I have stamps that are ages old, so and make sure it's got enough to so you feel like it's doing what you want it to do. Just make sure the lid's going to fit. I did a good job with these. Oh, that's perfect straight away. Just a little rattle, so that when you do the glaze, it's not gonna to be too. Uh, and since I did chattering down there, maybe I should be doing some chattering up on top too. And brush away anything. little chattering effect there. I may not glaze these chattered areas, I may just glaze and then rub the glaze off even to get a nice feel. I'm probably going to use a lot of oatmeals on these. So I just trim that one and if you're going to do, don't have much, you've got a few ribs in that one there, just there's a couple of lines going around there. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is Use a different stamp in the bottom area there. Oh, I've got the style. I've got so many stamps. This one's kind of interesting there. And you've got a little crisscross one there. Let's see if this one will work. How far down should we go here without denting the pot? Not too bad. It's a bit hard actually. So I don't think I'll do too much of it because it might dent the pot. Just something down the bottom there that somebody will have their eye caught with. I suppose I could try this one on there too. So we're just playing. There's so many different motifs that you can use. I've always wanted to do a Celtic knot stamp, but I've never done it. 
but that was just that one and that one. Stamps can take a long time to make. Oh, that's not bad at the bottom there. Just give you a little something. I see if the lid fits on this one. I've had good luck with all the lids so far. And that one too. You haven't. Oh, that's a touch tight. I think I'll just trim a little off that. Just on the inside there. It fits so well that after the glaze is on there, I just worry it'll be a little bit tight. That's a bit better. With the glaze on there, that should be just tight, actually. Let's pull that over. Um, of course, let's see. What can I do with these? This one, this is a... I, have to I bought a bunch of these. I don't use them very much. Uh, they work great. I can probably show you because they do work really well. Um, but I like to use my own. So let's see if we can get this one going. They rotate really well. It's made very well. I can't remember who makes this. MKMR something. R1 I think it says. But, um, but I got these a while back. Make sure I don't hit the handle. I'll just run, do a trial run. Yeah, that's working fine. Then I'll put pressure on it. That one gave me a nice instant texture around the rim there. Okay, here I've got a bunch of leaf stamps that I made a long time ago as well. And there, and there. So these are just different sculpted leaf leaves that I put into clay, uh, just with the carving tools. Um, my clay is a little dry at this point, so let's see whether it works. Oh yeah, it's denting in a little bit. So I'm just going to leave the one in there, because I pushed it in and I felt it give a little bit. So I know when to stop. Yeah, that one's not very heavy. So you've got to be aware of that when you putting pressure on a piece of pottery just remember to feel for that if the clay's giving a little bit it means that you really oh this one needs some trimming that's good to show because I left a nice thick rim on the inside that I can just take out there's a pebble in there too by the feel of it but uh, and now it fits perfectly, or oh, it's probably trimmed a little bit too much off it, but it'll thicken up with the glaze in there as well. But that's why I'm saying when you're throwing these things, make sure you leave your rim, this top area, a little thin, uh, sorry, a little thick, and then you can actually have space to work with if it's uh, the lid's a bit tight. That looks like it has plenty on there already, actually. You know, we've got stuff on the lid there with some lines, and then we've got Line, horizontal lines and some vertical ones. Huh? This one's heavy. Heavier. Oh, and there's good news. My, my debit uh, credit card was just billed for nearly $5,000 for uh, clay, so it's finally been shipped. So, um, so it's been 12, almost 12 weeks, I guess. So. And it's like everybody who's buying cars at the moment, they can't get the car, they have to wait for that as well. And if I want my lawnmower fixed, I can't get that done properly. I mean, everybody, everybody's behind. So let's see what we can get. Maybe this won't be quite as, yeah, sort of giving. There's a little leaf. I feel like Bob Ross. There you go. Here's a little leaf. Here's a little tree.
Yeah, if I used to do craft fairs, so I would take clay with me to craft fairs and just do these because um, there'd be hours goes by, go by sometimes if the craft fair wasn't panning out where you had nothing to do. So I always made sure I took things with me to the craft fair that I could actually work on. Some of those black and white carved mugs that I used to make were made at craft fairs. I had people want to buy them, you know, reserve them, and so it was good to demonstrate. And I always thought demonstrating was good. Some craft fairs didn't want you to demonstrate, which I always thought was strange, because I would thought that would be a good selling point for the craft fair. But, um, but that was many years ago. I don't do any shows anymore. But when you're first getting going, it's nice to do a few shows because you get direct feedback from your customer base. So, um, all right, so this clay was thicker, so you could do that. And here's a lid. Oh, that one fits good. Oh, it's a bit of a wobble. This one's a goer. It's, it's a winner. Okay, let's see what can I do up on there. Let's do the roller. I don't know what I do with my roller. Oh, there it is, right in front of my eyes. This is the roller I made at school. Oop, let's see if I can get it to work properly. See, that roller's been with me for going on 50 years made when I was a kid and then of course it might be fun to have let's see what we have here uh, I just use a little spiral I got a, a spiral I tried to make using a, a slab of clay and just rolling it together it never worked very well but it makes a little divot Just a mark and a little rattle on your lid. Yeah, these are like little coffee jars, little sugar tea bags. Okay, here's my little lid that I have spare. So there's also this that you can do just using a trimming tool. Although it takes a little longer to do this than it does using that roller. And when you're carving recycled clay, it's easy to hit a little piece of pebble or foreign matter that's in the clay. I've done that several times. So you have to determine when you're making a piece, what price you can sell it for, what do you think is reasonable if somebody's gonna pay for something, and with what you're doing to something, you know, how much time can you spend on it? Because everything is about the economics. We all love doing the pottery, but um, if you have to drive to craft fairs to sell your work, when that comes into pricing as well, then um, you gotta be very careful how much work you put into stuff. And you still got to make it nice, but, but there you go. That was a lot longer time spent on that than doing the roller. 